Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part two for this news report. Today we're going to finish up with the uh, Middle East and that. Um, we just left off with Iranian jets firing on U.S. drone. So big, uh, and then of course the Fox News. I saw them covering and, and, and really building up um, the fear factor as far as Iran goes. So you know, just like everything else, um, you can tell you can tell what they're what they're what's on their agenda here. Right after the elections, they're just going to keep pushing forward with it, uh, like the Syria escalation um, with now Iran with the drone and then building up uh, hyping up their exercises. West Africa Army Chiefs Adopt Mali Intervention Strategy West African Army Chiefs have adopted a military plan to expel rebels from northern Mali as the extremists push for a negotiated solution to the crisis. Well, they don't care. They don't want to talk. Just like everything else, they don't want to talk, you know, uh, with Syria. They don't want to end the crisis. They don't want to end the bloodshed. I mean, you think Assad wants it? No, he doesn't. <laughs> it's just... Uh, the problem is is that they're creating the crisis so i mean it's kind of hard for someone that's a leader of a country to say to just step down oh yeah you know what you guys are you know you guys are bringing in these terrorists and stuff like that and blowing shit up and killing our civilians and just wreaking havoc and i'm just going to go ahead and step down you go ahead and take over our country that's what a real leader would do right the military blueprint will next be studied by regional heads of the state for approval before being presented to the UN Security Council on November 26th. On the whole, the strategy was adopted and our friendly troops will come here to help Mali reconquer the north. So this is all a result of uh, uh, the regime change in Libya. But uh, like I said, they don't, they don't want to talk or anything like that. Mali's Ansar Dine Islamist and Humanitarian Aid Deal. One of the groups in Northern Mali has agreed to allow humanitarian aid groups into its territory. So there you go. There's that. Islamist group Ansar Dine in the north. Mali says it rejects violence, ready to talk to the government. So rejects all forms of extremism and terrorism. So, but, uh, you know, they're going to have to keep pushing that, pushing forward with the Mali operation. Prosecutors expect Libya's cooperation if judges rule Gaddafi's son should be tried by the International Criminal Court. So, I mean, you know, where's Blair? Where's Bush? Uh, where's all these people? Clinton, you know, Hillary Clinton. Where, why aren't these people going to International Criminal Court? Well, because they're the victors. You know, just like the victors rewrite the history. Chief prosecutor said Wednesday that she expects the Libyan puppet government to support and cooperate uh, if judges rule that the son and one-time heir apparent of late Libyan dictator Muammar Gaddafi must be tried by the War Crimes Tribunal, not by a Libyan court. So, pretty interesting. I mean, they totally disregard all of the black Libyans that were, uh, um, it was a genocide, you know? It was genocide. And they were targeted by these rebels, and nothing happened, you know? Even in Ivory Coast, when they were trying to overthrow Bagbo, uh, there was a bunch of, bunch of uh, graves that were found, mass graves that were on the side of the opposition, Arataro, whatever his name was. But uh, it's Bagbo that's in the International Criminal Court now. Retired colonel found dead in Benghazi. So another assassination. Retired colonel from the Gaddafi era uh, has been found murdered at his farm in Benghazi's Venice Street. So again, these guys are being targeted, just like Bonnie Walid. And they're doing nothing. Nothing. I mean, they completely evacuated, forced evacuated uh, Bani Wali and all its citizens out of their homes. Libya militias executed Gaddafi loyalists. So this is from October 17th, so a little less than a month ago. Libyan rebels appear to, appear to have summarily executed scores of fighters loyal to Gaddafi and probably the dictator himself when they overran his hometown a year ago. Human rights groups said, oh, see, the human rights group is going to come in now. Um, yeah, but what about war crimes? War crimes, Gaddafi, his son, and over 60 loyalists executed by rebel fighters. 50-page report, Death of a Dictator, Bloody Vengeance, and Cert, uh, details the last hours of Muammar Gaddafi's life on October 20th, 2011, when he was caught trying to leave the city with his remaining supporters flying a white flag. And, of course, they were what? They were guided by uh, U.S. intelligence and drones. Okay, we all remember the... Um, uh, Zionist-backed, produced, funded, uh, not even really a film, I don't know what you would call it, but it was a trailer on YouTube, Innocence of Muslims, that supposedly sparked the rage around the, around the world by Muslims, right? So then the news could uh, put Muslims 
on the uh, on the TV screaming and everything and say, see, look at them, they're apes, they're animals. That's your, that's what the Zionists call uh, Arabs and that they call them they call them dogs, and um, that was gonna you know that was gonna help Romney, right? But uh, you know, not everybody bought it. And this guy uh, was basically exposed for what he was, which was a shill, right? He had a bunch of fake names and stuff like that uh, to hide uh, his ethnicity, right? Ethnicity. But the the news in this story is his quote because, you know, they said he issued a provocative statement. So even to this even to this time when he was basically shown for what he was, a provocateur. Uh, they said he issues a provocative statement. It's not provocative at all. It's it's just complete crap. He says the one thing he wanted to tell me that he is he's talking about the lawyer. The lawyer said the one thing he wanted to tell uh, me to tell all of you is that President Obama may have gotten Osama bin Laden, but he didn't kill the ideology. So like I said before, if Osama bin Laden was raided in Pakistan. Um, he was an asset of the Central Intelligence Agency in the West, you know, uh, to help create this shadow, elusive boogeyman organization uh, known as Al Qaeda, and he was the leader boogeyman. Uh, but uh, Pakistanis say that he wasn't even in the country, and there's reports that Osama bin Laden's been dead for years. So I kind of dis I kind of disagree with that. His body was never found, dumped at sea. And they said, uh, this guy said, but they didn't kill the ideology. So he's actually giving credit to Obama. So this, is, this story is helping Obama post-election. And, um, you know, like all those people that were, on, that were out there protesting, they weren't just protesting the, uh, the film, even though that's what all the news outlets were saying. They were just protesting because it was a culmination of uh, anti- or Islamophobia, basically. And um, this is usually done by Zionists to divide and conquer between Christians and Muslims and other, and basically the entire world. So I said, but he didn't kill the ideology. Well, what ideology are you talking about? An entire religion? Or are you talking about like an ideology like Zionism? You know? Yeah, I remember when this came out 23 hours ago, uh, and this didn't have 637 thumbs up. Uh, but this is what there's a. I saw a lot of people saying this. The guy has a point. Bin Laden is dead. But psycho terrorist isn't. Yeah, and this one. Yep, this film led to violence in the Middle East because you know the Middle East was peaceful before it. You know, uh, totally disregarding that a lot of what happens is the result of their own governments and their tax their taxes going towards drone bombing people in other countries and trying to invoke regime change and instability. See, these people totally disregard that. So, yeah, pretty interesting because uh, someone actually said that it's convenient that finishing up, can we now get the real story in Benghazi, the election is over. So people don't want to know that we shouldn't have even been there to invoke regime change to begin with, whether it was Republican or Democrat um, um, uh, president. I mean, I've mentioned that before. But the real story in Benghazi, well, let's see, who benefits, right? Well, let's see, who benefited from the innocence of Muslims? Well, Romney who supports uh, Israel big time, right, and the Zionists. Uh, who supports instability and the sacking of an ambassador? Oh, you're weak on terror, the Zionists and Israel. So you can see, just like 9-11, who is behind it, the Zionists so, and Israel. So you can see what this whole thing was about. But the whole thing is about what? Just don't go into other countries and meddle in their business like they're doing in Syria. Obama bombs Yemen hours after winning re-election. Not even a full day has passed before the newly re-elected President Obama ordered another drone strike in Yemen. So a group, uh, targeted a group of al-Qaeda militants, again, that could be anyone, on the outskirts of the Yemeni capital, Sana on Wednesday night, killing at least three terrorists, the government officials said. But, uh, you know, people think they play it down as far as Obama goes uh, because, you know, he's not like Bush where they had boots on the ground in Iraq and he was on television. This is more covert. The drone war violates both domestic and international law, and the Obama regime vehemently disdains uh, for transparency, and government is the only thing that keeps or is keeping it from public and legal scrutiny. Beyond the law, it's terrorism. Then, and, of course, if you try to protest it, you'll get arrested these drone strikes. 2012 U.S. elections, the people have spoken. 
no confidence. So a vote of no confidence after a vote. Here's some math the establishment hopes you never do. You take the popular vote the newly elected president received and see what percent of the voter turnout it actually makes up. You'll find that out of eligible voters, the president is put into power with only 25 to 35 percent, and they call that democracy. You know, I, I covered it on election night, 60 percent weren't voting. So it's like, okay, well, 40%, and I saw that in South Park, even South Park, they were wrong when the stand was saying, well, you know, if, uh, you know, if half the people vote, you know, it's like, well, no, it wasn't half. It was like, like 40%, if that, that were voting. What about the other 60%, the majority that didn't vote? This isn't just with uh, President Obama in 2012. It's a common feature of most U.S. elections and around the world. So there you go. There's the numbers. Out of 10 eligible voters, only three will have picked the U.S. president. Only about three have given approval to the wars and policies carried out in America's name. This is a myth of democracy, representative governance, and manufactured dissent or manufactured consent, engineered consent. It does not re represent the vast majority of people who are affected by the decisions these governments or uh, movements then make with their self-proclaimed mandates. It says in countries like Thailand, uh, where violent mobs hold the nation hostage, representing a fraction of the 1% of population, and it's claimed by Western media that these are the people. Come election time, the Western-backed parties claiming to run the people's power garnered the support of a measly 32% of eligible voters. Likewise, in Syria, where the people are rising up in the nation of 20 million, even if or if even half rose up armed with only broom handles, the so-called revolution would have been over in a week. Then next up we have the real winner of the presidential election is the Federal Reserve and helicopter Ben Bernanke, Ben Shalom Bernanke, I guess it's called. So the U.S. News and World Report knows that Bernanke helped Obama to get reelected by juicing the economy, at least temporarily. The Fed had a key role in the presidential election, possibly even a decisive one. So we know that fuel prices were lower, and right after the election they've already gone up. Exit poll results show that, not surprisingly, a majority of voters said the struggling economy was their top concern. That's right, 60%. In the end, voters seemed to believe the economy was gradually getting better, and Obama deserved more time to make things right. Consumer confidence rose sharply in the weeks leading up to the election, even as business leaders were becoming more worried about problems such as looming fiscal cliff. So, and this is what they're talking about, what they did before September 13th. Fed to spend $40 billion a month on bonds. The move would make it cheaper for consumers and businesses to borrow and spend. So the Fed will spend $40 billion a month to buy mortgage bonds for as long as it deems necessary to make home buying more affordable. So many people will say, well, what are you going to do? That's nice, but what are you going to do? How can we fix this? And uh, my answer is, well, I, I don't think the problem is going to be solved politically. I mean, it's nice that, you know, marijuana is supposedly uh, uh, legalized, but they're, they're still going to do what? They're going to get raided by feds. Um, you know, I mean, I guess maybe if we went back to like a confederation of states or something, that would be a step in the, in the, in the, in the right direction. But it's not even about that. You're not going to be able to have any representation. You're not going to have a real democracy. So it's just uh, you're just going to keep rambling on, and you can't not going to take up arms and overthrow the government because that's what they did with the revolution, and the king of England he funded that because you know they knew that they had to uh, start a new account, right? And Smoke and Joe Fraser he had a really good video yesterday the way he put it as far as the Civil War goes, um, he timed it like it was like from uh, eight was it 1790 uh, after the revolution. Uh, it, which is basically what we took on debt we took on debt um, after the war to pay for the lands and um, of course what Hamiltonian economics Hamilton he was a big borrower he's all about taking on public debt I believe it was what the 70 year T-bills or something like that and uh, when it came when it came up right around 1860 oh that's right around the Civil War the Rothschilds who own England they wanted it back right well instead of repossessing the land you had what Lincoln who's kind of in the way, who said we want to issue greenbacks and stuff like that for the recovery. No, no, no. See, that's probably why he got killed. My point is, if there's another revolution, it's going to be the same thing, which is to start a new account. It's all about gutting services and making smaller government. So that's what we have to look forward to, smaller government. 
We may have opportunities there. They're already talking about it, why Social Security is running out. Originally, it was a retirement program, nothing more. No, that's wrong. Again, U.S. citizens were used as collateral on debt, which is why they have to create a new tax, like a carbon tax. Thank you.